Hello and welcome to my end game guide for upgrades. All right, so I've done the early game and the mid game. So the end game would be from essentially chapter like 14 until the end. So most of these upgrades you'll be getting throughout these chapters. So I'm going to focus on which units are the best to upgrade first into elite and I'll also go over other units that are like good candidates. So we'll go over like the absolute best units to upgrade and why to upgrade them. And then we'll go over the actual upgrades for each unit. So by upgrade, I mean from like their like veteran to elite status. So all right, so let's start with um, who you should prioritize making elites. I would say Eridor should be the first one. Um, he's just really good. He gets desperate defense when you upgrade him. This is way more high impact than most of the other upgrade abilities. Uh, Crinton is also a good first or second because of TP on ice and spam. He can get Glacial Moon pretty early. And once he gets TP on ice, he just doesn't need a battery anymore. And then if you have a battery, he can just spam Glacial Moon. Um, other units to upgrade. Uh, Frederica, you do it for the stat increase. Same thing with like Roland. And Sarah Noah has some pretty... Like these, these three have pretty good stat increases from making them elite. Um, I don't know why I made Anna elite in this one. I thought like for, for whatever reason, I thought I was on the, my other save where she has upgraded weapon and like deadly blaze. So this actually, this Anna is like gimp. She doesn't even have her tier two weapon, but Anna can be good if you upgrade her. She can spam items. She can like deadly blaze combo things. And she's a really good unit on a fresh save. Uh, Hewett's a good unit to upgrade. This, I would prioritize Eridor and Corintin before any of these. And then, like, these units that I'm going over, you can upgrade them in any order. It doesn't really matter. Uh, Julio can be good to upgrade. You get Inheritor. Now, obviously, you get this kind of later. It needs to be, like, level 27 to 30. I don't know the exact level it unlocks, but it's going to be towards end game. So he can kind of you can kind of hold off on his. Uh, Gila, she can be okay. Uh, really, it just lets her sit on more TP. But she's usually going to be burning through TP and not catching battery. So you can kind of hold off on hers. For Milo, it can be okay if you get Power of Love early, so that she can sit on higher TP when batteried. Uh, on more on more aggressive maps where you don't have dead turns to build up TP, uh, it's not really super useful, but it's, it helps. Uh, Avlora, I would say don't bother until New Game Plus. Hasabara, don't bother <laughs> in general. Yens, he just spams traps for one TP. He doesn't really need anything else. Uh, Medina, she's kind of you can you can upgrade her. Uh, getting her to elite doesn't really matter because like she's usually just going to be spamming double items if you're using her anyways. So she's usually not going to hit five TP. Uh, this is true on new game plus as well, unless you also run Julio, but that's like really unnecessary. Uh, Narv, you can upgrade him if you want. He gets extending your reach. Maxwell, I would hold off on upgrading him until New Game Plus. He, he gets revived. Like, I could level him up through uh, mock battles right now to 31, and he gets revived. Uh, but before that, he's basically just less damage than Roland until, you know... Like, he, he generally deals less damage than Roland, but getting him high jump and then getting him revive takes a lot of time. So making him elite doesn't really help. He needs to hit, like, level 31. Archibald, I would say don't even really... I wouldn't even recommend running him on a fresh save. Uh, he has low mobility, and you have to, like, you know, upgrade components are scarce, so wasting them on Archibald this early I don't think is really worth it. There's better options, like mages are just way better. Azana, making her elite doesn't really matter. For Picoletta, honestly, you can leave her at veteran. She doesn't need the upgrade. You can upgrade her if you want to, like, once you, if you run her a lot, like, it's fine. But you can, you can straight up leave her at veteran. She also doesn't need upgrades. She just spams items and decoys, and that's all she needs. Uh, Grama, skip it. <laughs> Lionel, you can upgrade him if you want to. And then <laughs> Benedict's still a recruit. Um, you can upgrade Benedict. Uh, making him veteran, or making him elite, can be okay. Um, it's whatever. I mean, you can, you can upgrade him if you want to. It's not, like, priority. Uh, so those are those units for the upgrades. All right, let's go over the the weapon upgrades for like so those are class upgrades. All right, so for weapon upgrades, this is my Saranoa. So you might be tempted to upgrade Saranoa a lot, and I think this is actually a pitfall because he will generally not deal good damage. The reason for this is hard mode punishes you being aggressive, and unless you have crowd control or mitigation, you cannot be aggressive with a melee unit. They will get comboed and die. So having Saranoa be aggressive is not really a thing. I would say just get 
his first damage upgrade, his first health upgrade, Hawk Dive range plus one, and then have him spam, spam under Conviction's banner. Like, once you get under Conviction's banner, he should, at most, be smacking things or throwing a stone, and then just spamming this as much as possible to fuel your mages, because mages are so much better. If you're trying to beat this game on hard deathless on a fresh save, this is, like, optimal Serenoa build. Uh, giving him slightly better defense, skip it. Luck sucks, skip it. Uh, more health, he's already durable enough. More single target damage, not good. Uh, route and recover, you don't need it. You really don't need it. it, it he's going to be next to a healer the entire game. So, for Roland, I think this is fairly optimal. Um, this, Fit and Fortuitous, skip it for now. You can get it later. Uh, but damage upgrades, because he's an AoE unit. Some health for early game. And you can get more health if you want, but... I would, I would prioritize Rush minus one first before damage upgrade, and then get damage upgrade one, or get damage upgrade one, Rush, damage upgrade two, damage upgrade three, and then whenever you can, get crit damage up. And then you can throw a crit necklace on him, and if he rushes or flash of steals behind enemies, it does ridiculous damage, and it basically makes him as damaging as a mage. So he's a pretty good, he's a pretty solid unit on a fresh save. Uh, for Benedict, I think this is pretty optimal. Uh, you can just... I just threw this on him for fun, but... get a You can get a health upgrade and then just get speed. Get the speed and then... Um, you can get these. I, I, I did Raging Beast, but... You can get one or both. And then for... Like, speed is better than Dragon Shield, I would say. Um, in general. You can get Dragon Shield. Like, it's, it's something you can unlock pretty quickly. You could prioritize it depending on what your build is. If you're planning on using Medina and Julio, for example, you could get away with using Dragon Shield. But my problem with running Benedict in general is I would rather have either a damage unit or another shutdown unit. Because Benedict himself just improves the effectiveness slightly. Not a lot. He doesn't double your damage. He doesn't give, increase your damage by 50%. He doesn't even increase your damage by 25%. He increases your damage by like 5 to 10. So he... like. For the first couple of chapters, the damage increase is substantial because everyone has like 5 and 10 for their like, you know, defensive stats and offensive stats. But for like mid-game on, it just it falls off so hard. It, it's just not worth running. Uh, people overhype now. Like, why what why would I use now when I could just have Corinthian, Azana, and Frederica? Like, I would rather just have another mage that can do something. Um, yeah, the argument for him on a fresh save I don't think is a very strong one. I would say skip him. I only even gave him speed buffs because I just had him spam Raging Beast when I did his uh, Golden Route map. Otherwise, I don't even recommend running him. Honestly, there's better units. Um, but this is what I would... I would, op I would optimize for speed. And then if you want to use Dragon Shield, get that first and then get speed too. Uh, but Dragon Shield, it's, it's one of those things where it can help you. But it almost like encourages you to be more risky than you should be. So you can get it if you want, but I don't recommend it. I mean, you can. It's fine. It, it, I'm sure you can win maps with some Dragon Shield strats. And it can help with green units, too. So that is one upside to it. Uh, but Crinton can also shield a vice green unit, so it's debatable. All right, for Frederica, this might look weird, but um, I think it makes sense. So, all right, so why? what are her upgrades that you should prioritize? I would say the very first upgrade you should get is probably this. And then this, and then you can get the health if you want, and then you want to get the weapon damage up. Um, probably after this, KOTP Plus is extremely good. It's better than a damage increase because it increases the amount of TP that Frederica has access to. She will almost always be last hitting someone because she tends to go last in turn order. So like all of your other units take their turns, then she hits something that's at like low health and kills at least one thing. So she gets she profits TP from this. Uh, and then I would get the damage upgrade, and then I would get one of these. But you can see here, uh, I don't. E I have zero quality fiber, so getting this final thing is taking forever. Uh, I, I unlock Sunfall before the magic damage increases, because you can see I need to unlock this one and then this one. And I'd rather have this, like Scorch damage up, than this. So I just went for Sunfall. Sunfall is good. You have to know how to use it. Generally, you just have Eridor, Fury, a bunch of things, and then over time, Sunfall will just cast and deal, like, half their health as damage. So, if you use it optimally, it can hit, like, five to seven things for 50% of their health. 
pretty insane, so can't go wrong. For Gila, uh, first upgrade you should get is this, and then you can get her health, and then in mid-game you can get her this, and then if you want you can get her haste or jump, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I actually probably should have gotten her this, I don't know why I got her the haste. Actually, no, the, the increase in the effect is actually decent. Uh, and then range plus one. I would say range plus one is better than res. Res, res, things like res and dragon shield, they're really good for like green units, but like for actual play, you can just play positionally and you should be fine. And I would rather have passive increased range. Like you can see here, like the first upgrade, you know, I think is like two, and then the second one is 10 superior stones. So good luck getting that, right? So like if I had to choose, I would say ability range plus one is way better than res because this is constant. Every single spell she casts now is increased range. That's so much better than a four TP res I can use like once or twice a match. Uh, all right, Huet. So you can see I invested a little bit in her, uh, but her shit is pretty cheap. Like a lot of this stuff was easy to get. Um, damage is good. Uh, accuracy is good. Health is good. I threw this defense on her just beside the resources. Uh, but for priority, you want to prioritize this. Shadow Stitching, I'd say, is a little bit better than Blind. Three turn Immobilize can shut down enemy melee. Um, for three turns, you know, she can maintain this on up to three targets if it continues to proc and she catches some battery. I would say range plus one is really good. Um, Shooting Star is decent, but I feel like Shadow Stitching is good enough that you're better off just spamming that and that's what she wants to be doing. And, like, you know, I would get range plus one and then maybe Shooting Star. Uh, you can get this, increase your critical uh, hit rate. This is actually decent, uh, but you can see there, quality fiber. A few units are competing for that, so that's something you get a new game plus. All right, for Eridor, I would say Provoke TP minus one is better than King Shield. Now, this is going to seem stupid, uh, but you can easily deal with Eridor's downside by looking at what the enemy mages can do and just throwing resistance amulets on him. So if you know they have fire mages, throw a fire amulet on him. Now he takes 30% less fire damage. You know they have ice mages, ice amulet. Do they have wind slash uh, lightning mages? Throw a wind and a lightning amulet on him. Like he can be tanky to magic, you just throw amulets on him. And then obviously you want to prioritize the magic defense increases and then the physical defense increases. But I, I would say provoking, being able to provoke every single turn is better than king shield by far. It also lasts longer when it hits. It lasts for two turns versus one. King Shield can be good, but it requires a battery. I think it's more of a new game plus ability. All right, Corintin. I guess we can just focus on, like, the end game upgrades. Like, which... All right, so for Corintin, I'll just focus on weapon rank 2 and 3 because I've already gone over these in the other videos. Um, damage increase, uh, Icy Breath damage increase, Glacial Moon. Pretty simple. You can get his movement whenever. It's going to take you a while. A lot of things are competing for this quality fiber, so it can be annoying to get. But Glacial Moon, getting TP on Ice, getting Glacial Moon, getting some damage increase. This will make him insane. Uh, he's he's such a strong unit. He's probably one of the best units in the game. Uh, on, on Fresh Save, I, I think it's fair to say he's the best unit, like in general. He's pro I think he's actually God tier on a Fresh Save. Once you know how to use him and then you take that knowledge into Fresh Save, he's ridiculous. The 90% silences. Uh, I don't, honestly, Ice Wall is good and you can use it, but I would rather just silence things freeze things, fuck up their mobility, and nuke them, and then use shield of ice as, um, like a tanking tool. But he's insane, so he's really good. Glacial Moon, definitely better than damage increase. Uh, Milo, you can kind of see here <laughs> what I put on her. Speed and, and heart stealer success. That's all you need. She, like, you can increase her damage again, but, like, this upgrade sucks. These are okay. Her defensive stats are already good. Power of Love is good, but on a fresh save, it's hard to get it off consistently because she's going to be competing with mages for battery, so it can be not the best thing to do. So having her just spam Heart Stealer for 2 TP is more viable. She can always um, Blue Knight things on dead turns to kind of like profit TP uh, in a way. Like she basically consumes 0 TP by doing it. She spends a TP to steal a TP, so she can debuff like a boss or something, and then like go and heart steal her next turn, debuff something, go and heart steal her. She can do this. She can always like smack with her fan and then heart steal her, throw an item and then heart steal her, like every other turn. Uh, heart steal is really good, so. All right, for Maxwell, uh, we can actually upgrade him finally. 
The sad thing right now is he needs to hit elite before he can high jump. So he kind of is in this like in between like phase. Like getting speed on him first is good. I would say get the speed first, get the damage first. So I would probably get this. I don't want to waste these superior resources yet. Um, triple thrust is like minus is good. Magic defense is good. Pretty much everything is good on him. I would prioritize the speed and then the damage. And then um, if you plan on running him, he's not going to really become useful or better. He's, he's basically just worse than Roland until like the last two chapters. And then he's not even better than Roland because you don't have as much battery spam with Medina to justify a high jump build. Uh, he still does less damage than Roland, but he's more durable once he gets revived. That's really the only upside. Um, yeah. But I would go for damage upgrades and then high jump because you're not going to be able to spam it anyways. Archibald. Um, you can kind of see here. I would just go for damage. So always grab speed. Here's a, This is a rule. Always get speed. Always grab speed. Always grab mobility. Archibald's three mobility is terrible. And he's really annoying to play around like on a fresh save. Like when he's on ice or water and you don't have this, he has two move. And then when he, even when he does, he has three. So it's pretty painful to reposition him. And you don't have like a Kohog or, or um, a Hasabara to throw him somewhere. So he's actually one of the worst units on a fresh save. Um, normal attack range is good, damage is fine. Uh, he doesn't really do anything on a fresh save that's like worth using. Um, yeah, like even this, like setting up Tempest and all this other shit. It's just like, it's too much setup. For Azana, Azana is definitely good on a fresh save. Um, you just get her damage increases and damage increases. Her, her weapon skills trash, don't even bother. Just get her damage increases and magic increases, which increases her damage. And then you can get this if you want, but it's fine if you don't. Julio, this is all he needs. <laughs> this is literally all he needs. He is a moment of truth machine. And then you just want you want to increase his speed, get a moment of truth. This is all he needs. Don't upgrade him further until you get the new game plus. Narv, uh, I used him a little bit. You can switch the elements depending on what you want to do. Uh, but I would say this is generally, you want his aura abilities. You want damage increases. Um, if I were to upgrade him, I would probably get the weapon skill. Actually, no, I'd probably get the magic first and then the weapon skill. Uh, it looks like it's, it'll be like one and one and then five and five. So he's pretty cheap to upgrade. So if you plan on using him, you can get whichever one you prefer. If you want a flat damage increase, plus two magic is only going to increase your damage slightly. But getting off Mystic Beams on, on a fresh save is kind of not something. Like, it's 4 TP. You're not going to be getting those 4 TP abilities off consistently. Because uh, Julio is going to be split between too many units. Medina, skip her damage upgrades. This is true on New Game Plus. Weapon skill sucks. Skip it. Skip the luck upgrades. Just get her speed. Just get her health. And then get her movement. That's all she needs. This is even true on, a, on New Game Plus. Uh, Yen's all you really need uh, you can get the movement thing it doesn't matter uh, i would prioritize this get him health and then get him this the rest doesn't matter his weapon skill also sucks uh this sleeping thing is whatever i mean tra spamming traps is better uh yeah this is all he needs so uh lionel i just learned that this triggers off of thrown stones so if you can get a bunch of status effects on things and have lionel throw aoe stones he could potentially be a good damage unit like in, in uh, coordination with like Eridor or something spamming fury um but i would say health and then you want to get the fury thing and then you can start getting damage on him but honestly i you might want to just skip and just have him spam items all right piccoletta this is all she needs uh get her first thing to do you can skip ball toss damage get her health get her speed get her movement that's priority. Then get evasion one and evasion two as you approach new game plus. Never get her damage increase. Do not get her accuracy increase. She's an item spamming unit. Ball toss is bad. Her whacking things is bad. You have her spam items. If you're doing itemless, probably don't use her. Uh, you can spam decoys to some degree, but the whole thing with itemless, it's like an attempt to balance the game, but the game's not balanced. So what are you going to do? All right. Anna. So this Anna is not upgraded, but Things you would want to get on her, speed, 100%. Speed and damage first. Uh, I think this is crit damage up. Yeah, this is crit damage up. You'd probably want to get that. So speed first, then damage. Crit damage up. 
I would say Deadly Blaze first and then her final damage. And she's pretty cheap to upgrade too. And then you can get the health and durability on her if you want and the accuracy. And then surmount uh, or like cost reduction is something you can get long term. But I would say you want to prioritize speed damage and backstabs. Uh, her durability is good enough because she can always hide whenever she's in a bad position. I have Laura. So like with all units speed. So in Laura's case you'd probably want to get uh, health damage um health damage speed actually no you get speed first speed damage health um i don't remember which these are i know this is bloody cross this is a damage increase i don't know what these two are i think one of these is like desperate defense or desperate offense or something like that desperate strike um i would say you want to get bloody cross as soon as possible that should be your first upgrade then damage then whatever else this is and then definitely speed first uh, Hasabara, you want to get her weapon skill increased to increase her healing. You want to get her healing up. You can use this sometimes. Um, catapult is only really her her like only really good thing. I would say get catapult and then this and then the movement. Uh, Grama, speed, get speed one, speed two, then damage one, damage two, get health. Um, Skyward Fist is whatever. I'd just go for damage. I mean, you can get it if you want. She's a weird unit. I don't like her as a unit. All right, that's it for all these ones. Uh, for Cordelia, I'll have to load a save. So let's let's go over. Because obviously you can't get everyone, so let's do this. Let's save this. We'll load uh, the new game plus thing I have. There it is. We'll go over the other units that you can get on a first playthrough. Hopefully there's not a cutscene. All right, cool. Sometimes I load into a cutscene and it's like, oh, I could have just went to roster. My bad. All right, here we go. Here's everyone. Okay. All right, roster. All right, so for the other units you could potentially unlock. So like Rudolph. Oh, wait, we have to go to the... I actually couldn't go to roster. I have to go to Yen's. All right, let's go. Let's start with Rudolph. So you either get Corinthian or Rudolph. All right, for upgrades for Rudolph, things you should prioritize. Uh, definitely damage. Damage, I would say damage and strength and then accuracy. Uh, speed, damage, strength. And then... Kind of a toss-up. I would say probably Reign of Arrows and then damage. Because Reign of Arrows gets some AoE damage, so that's pretty good. So, yeah. So, so damage, damage, accuracy, speed, damage, damage, and then Reign of Arrows damage. Alright, and then for Cordelia, for upgrades, her aura ability is kind of meh. Like, I don't really think it's that good. So, I, I would prioritize healing. In, in, so, healing magnitude increase 1 and 2. Uh, you can get her defensive stats if you want. And then... Ability range plus one. I would get that before overheal, and then I get overheal. And then the rest is optional. Travis. So Travis is another chapter 15 unit. Uh, I would say damage increase. Uh, backward toss, TP minus one. Damage increase. Damage increase. Heavy smash is really annoying to use. And then defensive stats and health. So like damage, health, defensive stats, uh, damage, health, backward toss, and then damage, and then if you want. I would actually get the fire resistance before the heavy smash, because heavy smash is actually really hard to set up. Sunfall is easier to set up, because you can do it at range, and the enemies can walk into it easier, and you can have Eridor be in the middle of the sunfall, and enemies will crowd around him. Whereas with heavy smash, because it's around Travis, it's harder to get the AoE how you want it. Uh, all right, so for Trish, uh, definitely speed. So speed and then damage increase. Speed and then damage increase. Um, this is okay. There's like some hardcore Trish fans out there that think this is like the best thing in the fucking world. Um, it's, it's okay. Like when there's a spoil and she can pick it up, it's fine. But it's not the best thing ever. Uh, accuracy up when clear weather is good. Uh, speed, accuracy up, damage. Um, 
this the leap thing is okay because she can actually grab high ground the, the problem i have with treasure and tp is that if you leap if you leap to high ground like it's annoying to play around because like if you kill a dude and then you have to hop down from high ground that's usually suboptimal and it's not the best thing ever um if you're gonna play her as an archer on the ground there's better things to do to do damage on the ground uh act twice i would or act again i would say act again should probably be a priority and then damage um the luck is like stupid don't even bother uh okay and then who else did oh yeah i didn't do flanagan you could get flanagan theoretically so for flanagan magic defense is always good um iron stance is decent but i would say magic defense speed health defense defense and then rampart and then the rest you can get what the rest can be whatever i would get rampart then more defense getting him damage doesn't really matter uh he's gonna be furying things and using rampart i actually like his tier two shield more than his tier three his tier two shield looks sick that's unfortunate all right yeah magic defense speed speed first then magic defense then health then defense defense uh, defense, or no, I'm sorry, defense, defense, rampart, defense. Okay, I think we have decimal. You won't get on a on a fresh save. Very unlikely. Same thing with Kohog. Same thing with Giovanna. So that's pretty much everyone that you could get on a fresh save. Um, so yeah, that's it for the end game guide for upgrades and who to promote. Um, I guess I can do this really quick. One thing I can do. I can go over the other units if you should promote them or prioritize it. So, should you promote this dude? I think he gets Staggering Arrow, doesn't he? I don't think Rudolph is a priority. He, you shouldn't prioritize him, making him elite. Uh, what about Cordelia? Uh, Cordelia I would skip too. Self-sacrifice is okay, but... I mean, if anything, the argument for promoting her to Elite would be so that she can get 5 TP to use Healing Region twice in a row. Um, you technically can kind of do this from 4 TP. Yeah, because, like, from 4 TP, Healing Region at 1, you wait, you're at 2, next turn you're at 3. Yeah, you could Healing Region. Like, Healing Region spam is really good. It's, it's like, extremely powerful when you have a range increase, but... Yeah, it's debatable. Uh, for for Travis, upgrading him to Elite Trial by Fire, not worth it. For Trish, increasing stealing, not worth it. Uh, for Avlora, Lone Wolf, it's okay, but it's a really specific thing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much... Oh, yeah, and then Flanagan, I guess. Let's see. Flanagan. Safe Haven. It's okay. I mean, it's... Ramparts is so much better. Like, this is just some chip healing. It's not a priority. So, yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out. Definitely like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed this or thought this was useful. I'll be seeing you in the next video, I believe, and peace.